Good afternoon, my name is Darren Benson with Performance Motor Coaches. I've had a lot of interest in this older MCI. It's a really cool, unique unit. Uh, it's a unit that I purchased myself to obviously resell, but I just kind of wanted to go over it. Uh, pictures really don't do it justice. It's very, very unique. A lot of thought put into this rig. So we wanted to go over the outside and the inside real quick and kind of check everything out. Uh, first thing you'll see are the very nostalgic uh, Zip-D awnings. It has awnings, patio awnings on both sides, and window awnings on the rear. Uh, just kind of a good classic look. Uh, fuels on both sides, 153 gallons of fuel both sides. Uh, this is to be considered the wet bay. Uh, lots of redundancy in this coach. It actually has two water pumps. Uh, just in case one fails. Uh, it does have the older hydronic system before Aqua Hot kind of went downhill a little bit. Um, there again, redundancy. You'll see the hydronic heater underneath here to keep the bay warm, and you'll see the 110 heater there as well. Uh, the monoblock water, water diverter or water system there. There again, kind of old school. Uh, just a lot of really unique pieces to it. Uh, gray and black water. We'll walk around the other side. But I mean, just kind of look at this older style faucet. There's something you don't ever see at this day and age. Uh, whole house water, water filter there. We'll walk back. Um, slide out tray. Uh, these actually access a portion of the torsion suspension. This has no airbags whatsoever. Uh, this bus was built in conjunction with DINA and MCI. Uh, it was actually built in Mexico, so it has a lot of the attributes you would find in a bus in South America, Central America. Uh, basically the idea is less things to break. So it's pretty cool in that it does have torsion suspension instead of air. Uh, so you'll have uh, just a soft ride, but without the issues with the airbags. Uh, all your control board for your uh, hydronic system there, uh, battery switches for your 12 volt and your 24 volts. Uh, it is, does have a 24 volt, I think it's a 3000 watt inverter on it. Uh, 24.5 rubber all the way around, which is pretty unique. Generally, you got 22.5. These are 11 R 24.5s all the way around. The date, the date codes on those uh, 14th week of 2017. So we got good batteries there. Sorry, good tires all the way around. Um, this is all factory MCI. This are all the relays and such that operate your chassis. Um, this little guy right here equalizes your two 12 volt batteries for the 24 volt system. Keep on walking through here. Uh, really nice access to your engine compartment all the way around. Uh, brand new chassis batteries, big 8D batteries. Uh, the engine itself is a 60 series Detroit, uh, sorry, a 50 series Detroit. Essentially, it's the twin or the little brother to the 60 series. Uh, it is the 60 series with missing two cylinders. The injectors are the same, the computer is the same, it starts the same, sounds the same. Let me see if I can't, I think we can start it from right back here. So, I mean, it sounds just like a 60 series, just a little bit less horsepower. This engine is rated at 320 horsepower and 1150 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, there again, just you see a regular belt driving the fan here instead of, uh, you know, Prevost uses a belt with a air-operated um, pulley system and it just, there again, just it causes you lots and lots of problems. Uh, this will actually suck air and divert air through this guy right here. There again, really easy to service. You could service the engine from that little compartment that opens up as well. Uh, this is for the dash air conditioning system. It's your fan and condenser. Uh, and then below that is the hydraulic leveling. This is a three point, so it should have a front center and then left and right on the rear. So it does have hydraulic leveling. Snap back into place. Uh, everything's working. I mean, we've, we've gone through it. Uh, is, is the bus perfect? The bus is not perfect, but it's 2001. It's very cool. 
Um, I wouldn't get, I wouldn't be afraid to get in this thing and drive to Canada tomorrow. Uh, it's very, very simple emissions. There's not a lot of stuff to break on this. Very simple. Um, the the short cord, 50 amp short cord, is electric. Pops out here. Uh, to access the gray water and black water is actually underneath and you have electric electric valves that are operated right back up in there. Uh, this does slide out, like I said, back and forth to each side. Generator, I was a little careful when you come through there, Doug. Uh, I was a little surprised to see Onan generator. I would have figured we would have seen some kind of Ryko, um, something on airbags. Uh, the nice thing about this generator is that pretty much anybody can work on them. Um, not an issue with it. This guy is only has 186 hours. I bought it with like 160. No, I bought it with 150. So I mean, I put some, I put a little use to it. Uh, we did service the generator. The engine's been serviced within the last thousand miles. There's no issues there. There again, fuel on both sides. Uh, the unit is all sheet metal in construction. So you know, none of the fiber mesh you see like on the diesel pushers and whatnot. See the zip awnings on both sides. Uh, this is just some access to some of the air systems for like the, oh, the, the toilet is air operated and some of the controls back in the dash are pneumatic and the uh, step itself, the, the step that covers the, the, you know, the entry well is pneumatic as well. Up front here you can see the um, house batteries and the air compressor, it has auxiliary air compressor. Uh, just so you don't have to be worried about, uh, you know, with the with the toilet being air activated, uh, you don't want to have to worry about running out of air, not being able to flush the toilet. So that's a little air compressor right there. Uh, the house batteries are all 8D AGM lifelines. I actually brought batteries in. I was going to change them out myself, and I got a pretty good little buzz from them and load tested the batteries to determine that they're all excellent. I don't know the year of the batteries, but I really hated to see spending. $2,800 on batteries that seem to be perfectly fine. Uh, I did replace the generator start battery back in there. Uh, that was a uh, Blue Top Optima. I went back with a Blue Top Optima. You know, when, when you see things like that, it makes you feel more comfortable that the previous owners uh, didn't skip out whenever you see Lifeline batteries, Optima, Optima batteries and such. Uh, as far as exterior wise, we'll run back really quick. Uh, the, some of these, these trim areas, um, this has always been used in really dry country. Uh, it hasn't been up north, so there's no rust on it. Uh, but it does have some electrolysis here and there. Uh, really not any major concern. Uh, there again, I mean, the bus is gonna last forever. If it's a major deal, you know, you take it to a paint shop and have all that stuff corrected. I really wouldn't spend the money. I wanted to highlight a little area back here. Yeah, there's really no electrolysis here. Five little scuff scrape. Um, see the little scuff right down this edge right here. Uh, there is a spot right here on the back that somebody's kind of halfway repaired. Uh, we've had a lot of people ask about the hitch. There's no rating on that hitch, but uh, I can just tell you from my experience and from Doug's experience, I wouldn't be afraid to put a 10,000 pound trailer back behind. Uh, anything beyond that might be just a little too much for the for the chassis and for the hitch itself. We'll walk through real quick. Great rooftop air conditioners. Uh, they do have heat pumps in them as well. Uh, it does have electric baseboard heaters. Of course, it has the hydronic heat as well. So kind of the whole theme with the redundancy through and through. This will be a little tighter as we go inside here. Um, really wide entry, entry well, passenger seat right here, all multiplex lighting throughout, multiplex system. I mean, even the, even the driver and passenger shade are electric and they operate. You start the generator from rear controls or you can start it from the multiplex system up here. Uh, 3000 series, I'm sorry, a 4000 series Allison automatic six speed transmission. Nice layout of the dash. Um, you know, cruise control works, everything functions. Uh, it does have a three stage engine brake, not exhaust brake, so it does shut the coach down. Um, the new Alpine 
stereo there that does serve as the backup monitor. Some of the other Alpine controls are still in there. However, they're obsolete, so none of that will operate. Dash Air works phenomenally. Uh, I've driven a 100 degree day and had no problem whatsoever. Um, I want to kind of get down to this floor here. Uh, I don't know exactly uh, if this is a maple construction, but just stuff you don't see, you know, the, the construction of, of this floor uh, is something you don't see at this day and age, it, and it's really even pretty surprising in a 2001. Uh, the colors in it, to me, are really retro. Nothing, nothing one direction or the other. Uh, I wouldn't change anything about this coach, and I'm pretty darn picky about different things. Um, we updated all the TVs. The TVs go into the, um, the stereo system. There's front and rear. Uh, I said everything works. Um, this does fold down. This folds down as well. All the windows are all double pane. Um, some of the butyl in the windows is double paned has kind of bubbled up a little bit. This coach was always stored indoors up until about a year and a half ago. And then it was stored underneath a cover for about a year and a half. Um, and that's whenever I purchased it. Uh, upgraded all the lights to LED. Some of these I didn't upgrade just because they were kind of a cool looking light. I didn't have an issue with them being halogen, but it didn't make a big difference getting rid of the vast majority of the halogens. It made it really, really hot in here. Um, cool retro bar stools. The kitchen here, even though it's relatively small, has really nice room, good room to it. Pull out cutting board. Try to get this Lazy Susan back in here. This is, to me, really, really cool. There again, stuff you don't see at this day and age. Um, I've been asked about the cooktop several times. It's electric, two burner. Sink is just a single basin sink. Uh, but like I said, everything's operating. I would imagine back at, at some point in time, this is probably designed for maybe a blender or something. Uh, there again, pretty cool setup. You use as a bar, extra storage, whatever. Uh, there's not a 110 there. Uh, however, there is, well, there's 110 somewhere all the way underneath there. Uh, there again, really, I mean, just all the cabinetry and such is really cool. Uh, this is just a regular microwave. I do not believe it is a convection. No, I'm wrong. It is a convection. Cool. Uh, regular residential refrigerator. Just kind of cool old school lock latch system. Um, but nice, just regular RV refrigerators. Just don't do it for me. I, I've always gone to a residential fridge and I just really don't have any issues. Um, Sure, at some point in time, this had a pull-out pantry. However, it is not in place now. Probably tough to see. You can use this as a pantry as well. The, like a broom closet, some of the electronics. Um, I'm taking most electronics out. Just at this day and age, there's just not a lot of need for um, the CD players and, and uh, disc players and such. Uh, all smart TVs. It's a pretty cool setup in the bathroom here. Uh, there again, very retro looking uh, glass sink. Uh, the wall sconce lights. Uh, the, the walls themselves have a lot of this really cool unique wallpaper. There again, something you don't hardly ever see at this day and age and even in higher end homes. I'm six foot tall. I've asked, had a lot of people ask about the shower. Shower is tight. I'm wearing regular tennis shoes. I'm six foot tall. I've got some room in here. You know, if you're any much bigger than I am, about 200 pounds, uh, it might be a little bit of a concern, but uh, there again, it's 35 foot coach. You know, you kind of, you kind of get what you get. Uh, fan there, said so everything works. I mean, look at how clean that fan is. You don't typically find a fan, 20 year old coach that's that clean. Kind of work our way around here. Uh, pocket door into the bathroom. I'm sorry, into the bedroom. If you kind of follow me through here, Doug, this is going to be hard to see. Uh, this door actually latches back into place. I don't know if you're able to see that. Uh, that's the, the pneumatic toilet. And then let me open up this guy right here. It's a little warm. I didn't want to run any of the ACs to make any extra noise. So this panel right here, um, 
it's broke down between your inverter devices and non-inverter devices. So you'll have to run your generator or have shore power for your underfloor heat, your air conditioning and such. But all these components here on the left-hand side operate off the uh, power inverter. Generator control here, or you can start the generator from up front as well. It does have auto generator start. I'm not going into great depth and detail on that. Um, this is all your 12 volt accessories right here. Uh, the front air compressor uh, is pneumatic, um, or is, is 12 volt as well. We'll walk through here, let me pop this back so Doug can stand back. Bedroom's a little tight um, for us to kind of film in. This originally had a TV in this area right here. Replace that, use some, some of the vinyl to cover that hole. Um, there was already a TV mount on the wall. Uh, we weren't able to move the TV mount. I would have preferred to move the TV further up, but it just kind of is what it is. Uh, but there again, smart TV, it does integrate with the stereo. Uh, let me catch some of these. A bunch of owner's manuals, basically. Um, all the manuals, whenever custom coat built it brand new. I've had a lot of people ask me the specs on some of the water and uh, fresh water and uh, wastewater. I can't find any of that info there. I've sent an email a few times to Custom Coach. I have not got anything back. Um, there again, just kind of is what it is. I'm guessing probably 100 gallons of fresh water and probably 50 gallons of gray, 50 gallons of black. Lots of storage there. Um, the bed does lift up. I'm pretty darn positive. Well, no. I could have sworn that there was some kind of, oh, it's got to be smarter than the bed mechanism. There we go. Does it have a safe underneath the bed as well? This was the guy that I was trying to pull. Oh, no, get the. The closet. Closet's back over here. I'll open up that side. You can kind of look through, Doug. Uh, deep closet. You have like a push light in there. Yeah, it does right there on the back wall. Pretty unique in that there's, I noticed there's a lot of extra wires that run in this coat. So if you needed to add things to it, it's not the end of the earth. Um, there were wires in the engine compartment so as to be able to add certain items you might need. These are just 110 lights right here. Everything else is 12 volts. Daynight shades all the way around. They're all in good, good condition. I believe that they've added this carpet on each side of the bed um, because it feels like uh, just the end of the carpet. So if the guy wanted to go through, um, I would probably go through, if, the, if I own this coach, have somebody go through and, and uh, sand the floor down to make that floor look brand new. Uh, it doesn't look bad. Uh, but it's just, that's a really high dollar floor and you can make that thing look brand new with just a little bit of work. Um, there were some accent lights. I don't know if I can find them. I thought there were some accent lights that were, oh, it's because someone turned them off. So pretty cool in back there. Yep, people, someone just turned them off so you can see the accent lights. There again, just stuff you don't typically see at this day and age. Just every little nook and cranny has a ton of storage. I think that's just about it. At the very least, we're starting to sweat, so we're gonna end the video. <laughs> if you have any questions, reach me on my cell phone direct, 806-786-7676. I think this coach is probably gonna go home in the next few days with the video here, but if you have any questions, give us a shout. I appreciate you looking. And if you like our videos, go down and hit the like button. Thank you.